This episode of the Royal Ocean Film Society is brought to you by Audible. This is a film about films. Specifically, animation. Even more specifically, the early animated films. Because despite popular opinion, the early evolution of the medium has almost nothing to do with these guys. Sorry, Walt, but you know full well that this wasn't the first animated feature film. In fact, it wasn't even the fifth. Best estimates put it as the eighth. The first two were made by a man whose name I won't attempt to pronounce that were lost in a lab fire years ago. That sucks. The earliest surviving feature is called The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, a German production by Lottie Reiniger and Karl Koch. For some reason, I think their names are more easily pronounced. Prince Ahmed was made with a simple but effective combination of light and cardboard cutouts. Many early films were animated this way, with models and cutouts and clay figures, but even more were done with simple paper and ink. Their creators came from every corner of the globe. They were painters, photographers, comic strip writers, filmmakers. And their influences were as equally wide-ranging. The Zoetrope, Flipbook, and perhaps most importantly, the Vaudeville Act. Many of the early films being far less concerned with story and character than with tricks and illusions, often literally showing characters being drawn and then coming to life. Displayed no better than in the very first animated film ever created, J. Stuart Blackton's The Enchanted Drawing. These were the films and these were their creators. The craftsmen, artists, wizards, and innovators who got us from here to here. This is Windsor McKay. Hello, Windsor. Windsor once claimed he was the inventor of the cartoon, but that was a bold-faced lie. He was, however, one of the many creative geniuses who helped to establish the fundamental creative and technical rules of the medium, who's perhaps most famous for creating the first fully realized animated personality in his precocious and curious dinosaur named Gertie. Hello, Gertie. But just as influential as the development of character was the development of the technique McKay used to bring Gertie to life, keyframing, which works like so. If a shot begins with a character here and ends with them here, then these are classified as the key shots. They're animated first, followed by everything in between, alleviating tedium and improving the timing of action. When asked why he chose not to patent the process, Windsor had this to say, any idiot that wants to make a couple thousand drawings for 100 feet of film is welcome to join the club. Gee, Windsor, that's kind of harsh. I guess he has the right to say that since he created animation at all. Despite not being the father of animation, Windsor McKay was by all probabilities the first true animation wizard, someone who embraced the medium for more than the simple parlor tricks that it was capable of. While other cartoonists were making one real laugh fest for younger audiences, McKay made his masterpiece, The Sinking of the Lusitania, a triumph of movement and perspective, and one of the earliest efforts that showed the limitless links with which animation could strive towards. And if McKay hadn't gotten screwed over by this guy, he could have gone on creating more and more wonderful works of art. Don't cry, Windsor. It'll be okay. By the time he made The Sinking of the Lusitania, Windsor had switched his method of production to something I'm sure you've heard of. Cell animation. A process developed by this man who worked for this man who ran this company. One of the very first fully functional animation studios who at various times also employed all of these guys. Each who wound up forming their own studio because as it turns out, this guy was kind of a dick. Cell animation, first developed for Bray's Bobby Bumps cartoons, works like this. The image in front of you isn't drawn by one person all at once. It's a handful of different elements all done by different people and then compiled and composited together, thus saving enormous amounts of time as it means only redrawing the elements that move. Whereas Windsor had to redraw everything inside this shot for every single frame. Sucks for you, Windsor. The basic ideas of animation having been set, much of the early history became a constant push-pull game of how the process could be simplified and bettered. The Fleischer brothers, Max and Dave, whom this narrator humbly believes to be gods of the animation world, were the first to pioneer the concept of rotoscoping, taking standard live-action footage and animating directly over it, the point being to achieve a fluidity in motion often found only in actual human movement. You can tell the difference if you look closely. Compare the almost too smooth rotoscope movement of Gulliver with the traditionally drawn townsfolk around him. Majesty, I'm sorry the little princess isn't with us. Uh, yes, too bad. Uh, too much excitement for one day. Unlike the other innovations we've covered, however, rotoscoping isn't without its detractors, as its usage has the potential to take away from the desired effect. From the very beginning, it was fundamentally clear that the world inside every animated cartoon was malleable, that it thrived in exaggerated movement and impossible gags. 
and that at its weakest, introducing a rotoscoped element risked harming that effect, risked breaking the illusion. However, at its best, the effect worked and still works like any other, by aiding and assisting to shock, stupefy, and amaze, best seen in the dynamic character animation of the Fleischer's masterful Superman cartoons. And then finally, we have Papa Walt. I've given him crap, but he and his boys did develop one of the most ingenious camera systems in all of film history. Tell us a bit about it, Walt. It is the blueprint of a piece of equipment designed to make cartoons more realistic and enjoyable. We call it the multiplane camera. The problem was how to take a painting and make it behave like a real piece of scenery under the camera. You'll notice that everything grows larger, including the moon. Now, when you walk along a country road toward the moon, it certainly doesn't grow larger like this, nor does it shrink in size when you walk away from it. So we set about making plans and blueprints for a new cartoon camera that would overcome this. The different elements in the scene were separated according to their varying distances from the viewer. This put the moon on a plane farthest away from the camera. With our original picture broken down in this manner, it is possible to control the relative speed with which each individual part of it moves to or away from the camera. But the moon remains absolutely still, and so it will always remain the same, neither growing nor shrinking in size. And here now is our same moonlight scene, the way the multiplane camera sees it. And that's how we got from here to here. This is a film about films, specifically animation. Because the history of its creation is widespread and worldwide. Pull back one layer and you discover five more geniuses, all working and striving towards pushing the medium as far as it can possibly go. Because despite it being one of the greatest magic tricks ever conceived, it's never been a medium limited to the realm of tricks and illusions. Extra special thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. If you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard me go on and on about how if you want to make great films, you have to study and dive into more than just films. And if your life is as anywhere busy and on the go as mine is, then Audible is far and away the smartest choice to help you stay on top of the never ending to be read list. Just recently, I finished listening to Better Living Through Criticism by one of my favorite film critics, A.O. Scott, and I can't recommend it enough. You can listen to that and thousands of others when you go to audible.com slash Royal Ocean Film or by texting Royal Ocean Film to 500500 for an exclusive 30 day free trial and a book of your choice for free. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out my other videos, you can click right over here. If you'd like to support Royal Ocean on Patreon, you can click right here. And if you haven't, be sure to subscribe.